Woo! Good morning, Vikings fans. This is Morning Joe's, and I'm good your afternoon. host. Yeah, good afternoon, actually. Uh, I'm your host, Joe Johnson, owner of PurplePTSD.com, VikingsTerritory.com, and PurpleTerritoryRadio.com. Here, as always, or as usually, with Mr. Joe, what you know, Joe. I don't know nothing. Could have been more appropriate music for me in my life. You you know, know, what a great uh, song for us. What a great... um, Intro? Yeah, and I was going to say a great uh, day. uh, Probably 12 hours now. Or actually about 16, 17 hours as we finally got to the bottom of the Kyle Rudolph situation, which is dominated... A lot of this post-draft coverage, and I know a lot of, I assume a lot of uh, listeners and, and readers and fans are kind of tired of hearing about it, so it's it's just a relief that that uh, has happened. But before we hop into that, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you know, we're in the afternoon here because, you know, we're morning Joes, but in the afternoon because we're on summer hours, so what are you going to do? That's <laughs> that's how it goes. That, and uh, you were at minicamp today, which... I was. Is uh been a kind of a rainy overcast day. Yeah, it was. It was weird because I got there right at the appropriate time, and I thought I saw some other uh, media members going outside. And by the time I got there, I arrived at the gate when, and only Chris Thomason from the St. Paul Pioneer Press was standing at the gate. And he says it's locked, and I said what? And you know, <laughs> I looked through to try to find the players and. I guess there were some sprinkles, so Zimmer raced him inside, not telling, you know, the two most important <laughs> media members uh, that this had happened. So we stood there, looked at each other, and said, "Do you have any phone numbers?" "No, no." So we started walking around. We finally, finally uh, worked our way back and heard him play, uh, practicing inside, and got in there and and, and watched him. And, and it, it made a good practice. It was pretty spirited. It seemed like it was, uh, you know. Uh, I was, you know, I was shocked, and I, I, I could tell you, Joe, you know, you before I last night before uh, I went down there in preparation for this, I told Joe, give me three names of somebody you want me to watch, you know, mm-hmm. for, for for the broadcast here that we could talk about it. So I, and he sends me, uh, Joe sends me several names, and uh, Jordan Taylor and uh, uh, Jeff, Jeff Bidet, Bidet, Bidet um... and. And who was the other one? Uh, Might have been Hercules Mata'afa. It could have been. No, no, it wasn't. It was it was another receiver. And uh, I, I get there and I start looking for these guys. And what are the odds? Dylan all Mitchell, three, probably. All three of them were not practicing. No, it wasn't Dylan Mitchell because he did practice. But uh, I'll get it for me here for in a second. But it it, it just it's it's the way things go on Morning Joe's. You know, we ask for. It, it, you know, what are the guys. odds of that happening? And I can All tell you what they're guys. doing, Joe. Yeah, I can oh. tell you what they're doing. Standing on the sidelines watching, just like me. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder why. Yeah, I know they didn't say. They, they, they never do. Uh, um, it was uh, kind of interesting that uh, there was quite a few people that were out. I mean, uh, more, uh, David Morgan still has not practiced. Uh, he did an OTAs, and he uh, he was there today. You saw him at the end. Um, let's see. Uh, Taylor had no helmet. Uh, Bowers was out. Uh, uh, Jeff Bennett was couldn't find him anywhere. And number forty-three, who the heck was that? That was the other guy you asked me about. No, I can't. Anyway, it was just I just laughed. I said, "Joe, uh, sorry, can't watch him. Not doing anything." That is that is the best way to sum up. If I could think of an example of how our luck works with this show. Yeah, right. um, you do you do a little show prep and it blows up in your face. That's what, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, was Elfline? Irv Elfline Smith Junior was the other one. That was the other one. You're correct. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, all three of them were were uh, not practicing, which was you know which made made uh, you know and you had Rudy. Speaking of Irv Smith, yeah. you had Rudy out there, uh, uh, you know, happy to be out there and practicing and. Uh, 
there was another tight end that got some uh, uh, a lot of reps with even with the first team. Conklin? No, it wasn't Conklin. It was uh, even a, a younger guy. And I'm, Gosh darn it! No show prep. I can't think of what it is. I'll come up with it later. But um, as a result of Smith being out, because Smith was get, had been getting a lot of time with the the ones and. And with him not practicing, they they moved another guy up. But that's it's always that opportunity. I suppose they have to with David Morgan being out and um, right. everything, which is which is there has been a lot of opportunity. I think that um, Ian uh, Paraguay and I did our uh, Saturday show, which is the call-in show. So if people listening aren't doing anything on Saturdays around ten eleven a.m. We we take uh, calls, quote unquote calls, people uh, joining our conversation on. Uh, Periscope, and um, we had just talked about kind of the blessing in disguise that is, uh, or at least had been, uh, Diggs not practicing uh, at OTAs, as that is kind of uh, given guys like um, Jordan Taylor more time with the ones, guys like Jordan Jack T- Bidette, um, Yeah, a lot of the younger the guys, absolutely. I, you know, what's interesting, uh, too, about that was hearing from Phelan what he had said about uh, Chad Beebe, which I thought was glowing praise, especially considering how good he and Diggs are. I would argue they're the top, them two are the best one-two punch at wide receiver, but they're the best one-two punch at running routes in, in the NFL. And uh, Thielen had said that he had never seen anyone move like Chad Beebe in regards it- to his, uh, his uh, route running, which... I don't know if you've if you picked up on any of that being there in person. If that he's just what he meant by that specifically, what he's really good at. If he's just good at coming out of his cuts, or if he's like digs and he speeds up in his cuts, or what. But that seems like uh, a, again glowing praise, but something that could potentially end up with him taking over the the, the three spot, depending on what they're looking for. Um, just before I answer that question, uh, Cole Hikutini. Number eighty-seven is the guy who was getting some some uh, run with the, the ones and two uh, tight end. Number eighty-seven, Cole Haikutini, H I K U T I N I, I believe. I, I, that's yeah, Haikutini. Uh, yeah. He's played in the league for two years. He's twenty-four. He's six-four, two forty, and he went to Louisville, which yeah, means he's been I getting... automatically hate him. Uh, he, he was getting a lot of run when, when they're doing two uh, tight end sets with Rudy in there. But anyway, uh, it's funny you should mention BB because I, I, I said to uh, said to uh, another media member, Tim Yotter, uh, today I said it's going to be hard hard to keep this guy off the off the team. You know, and you know he was actually back receiving all the punts today. I have to make an aside and say that this this new indoor facility at TCO is amazing because they can do they can punt inside the thing and not it's- you know. <laughs> yeah, that ceiling is – I don't know how they built that building, but that ceiling is so high. It, you feel like you're in some sort of airplane hangar or something, and the fans look like the the propellers uh, or whatever you call them from the Titanic. Right. They're it, just it's huge. A, it's not the best ceiling for picking up the, the, the kick either because I could see uh, BB having a little trouble with it, but uh, he, was, he was making all the catches. But – uh, Joe, he, he sticks out. He sticks out in just how quick quick he is, you know, in, in making his cuts and making his moves. And, and, and you know, what if he's got great precision in his routes to act on to that, it's only going to, uh, you know, make him better. He's, he's, he's tough. He's not as – I mean, he's not a big target to throw to, per se, because he's a small yeah, guy. 5'10". But he, he, he finds ways to get open, and he always hangs on to the ball. I, I – uh, you know, it, there's there's no two ways about it. This kid uh, c- could give the if he's given the opportunity and stays healthy uh, uh, more so than he did last year. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I won't go so far yet to say wide receiver number three, but he is in, certainly in the mix and certainly in the conversation. And yeah, I, I, I would certainly agree with you. I, you would have to think that if he didn't get injured last year, that he might have uh, gotten a lot more play during the the regular season because he's been one of those guys that perhaps unfairly because of that, has been labeled like one of the preseason studs or one of those guys that shows out a lot in in camp but doesn't necessarily come through in the regular season. And I don't necessarily think that's the case with him just based on a lot of the injuries and stuff. Um, But he definitely had a a great uh, preseason last year. 
And I think it's going to come down to really what the team needs or wants at the position because there are guys like Jordan Taylor who has been making these amazing sideline toe-touching sort of grabs. I think his touchdown that he had, um, I had it written down last week. I forget what uh, corner was working on him. But, you know, just in his size and his uh, dexterity in the – Getting his 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 feet in bounds might come in handy because if you look at if they're in the red zone or let's say the ultra red zone from the five yard line and you have a guy like him you have a who's six five then you have Kyle Rudolph who is uh, six five or six six then you have a, a kind of a pick your poison how do you stop this sort of situation um, but then you have the other guys like Bedette who's super fast and uh, BB who seems to be an amazing route runner. Uh, maybe they'll take one of each and keep, you know, f- that five, Taylor, Bidette, and uh, BB. But I don't think – I'm just a huge Bidette nerd because I like how fast he is. But I don't necessarily think he's kind of in that group of BB and Taylor. Uh, but I, I definitely think that that raises the po- uh, possibility that, that Treadwell ends up uh, on the chopping block despite the dead cap money. Treadwell actually looked good today, better than he did last week to me at OTAs. He, he made a couple catches, one on the sideline, ran a long route, decoy route down the, down the side of the field, and uh, um, with, he didn't get the ball thrown to him. But uh, he, unfortunately, uh, still, I mean, w- when you're p- watching people like uh, Badette, uh, uh, BB, and my God, uh, Diggs, and I'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, who who just have been racing up and down the sidelines? Treadwell looks so slow. He Does just, he? Yes, yeah, so he just he, he looks slow. It, it it you know I'm not saying he is that terribly slow, but my goodness, I, I mean that's kind of these, the knock against him. You, you see these jitterbugs of these other guys. They, uh, there there was one play today with from Cousins to Diggs. Diggs ran a seam route up the middle and. Mackenzie Alexander made a diving attempt to knock it out, but he, uh, he hit him right in stride. Beautiful zipping pass right in the middle, and and uh, Diggs was gone. Cousins, yeah, Diggs was gone. Just just caught it in stride and zipped up the middle and went to the end zone raising the ball almost like the, the same way last year when he, he kind of showboated for the crowd and it, it yeah. made uh, Xavier Rhodes mad. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was an exciting play, and it was oh. great. Great throw by Cousins. I, knew I forgot about him. that. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Rhodes thing last year, how, how ticked off he got. Um, that's a, I mean, with Treadwell, uh, the word has always been that he's slow, but he's also qu- super quick. So, like, from 0 to 10 yards, he's probably the quickest. Uh, but beyond that, he just has no top end. And the more – I mean, I've always ragged on him, and I've ragged on him this week even on our Slack with a lot of people talking about – liking him we, we we brought on like four new guys uh to help with some of the, the training camp stuff and we were talking about that but i think and, and we don't need to get into this because we talked about it a lot but you know he was brought in under a different regime a different quarterback a different uh offensive coordinator i think they had different plans for him and i think he could <coughs> potentially work in a different offense i just think that this isn't the offense for him so i certainly think you know, I don't think NFL coaches or GMs like anything more than first-round skill players that, that get cut, that they can, you know, with the egos saying, well, they just didn't use him right. I can fix him. He'll get another opportunity for sure. I've even seen people I, I, saying that we'll trade him to get Trent Williams here, which I don't know how much trade value he has. If any, no. I think it's kind of a negative, especially with his contract. No, they're going to cut him. I, I'm not, I shouldn't say they're not going to cut him, but people know that he's going to be done here, and he's. Uh, I don't think he does have any trade value. I think he could play somewhere else, but I mean, it, for me, it comes down to ability to separate, and cause or Treadwell just hasn't ex- demonstrated that that yeah. much. That he can, uh, you know, he might be quick out, out of the gate, but you know. Uh, all kinds of DBs in this league have plenty of closing speed that can come in and get on him when the ball is going to be coming out to him. I, I just, I, I don't think he has that ability, whether it's know-how, technique, strength, or what. But mental, he just uh, the mental toughness too. Just with that could be his inability you know, I, to catch the ball. I don't think that's a hands thing. I just think he takes his eyes off the ball too quickly. Or right, even when he's in traffic, he'll he'll have. Dra- I mean, when he's not in traffic, he's actually open. He had, he yep. has drops in big spots, and you just you can't have that if 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 you don't catch the ball. Uh, 
when you're supposed to in those situations, and then uh, it gets even worse when you're covered. It's it's a problem. I mean, especially when you're sitting across the line for someone like D- or Diggs and and uh, certainly Thielen, who just catches everything. God, the guy yeah. amazing. Yeah, you know? he he's. I mean, you look at guys like Chris Carter who, who and Moss, who who came in. I think who benefited greatly from uh, the tutelage of Carter. Um, and the hands that he had and the ability that he had to keep his feet in bounds. But even those guys, and this is really high praise because I clearly think very highly of both. I just wrote like a 5,000, not really, probably 2,700 word article about uh, the Moss trade and how bad I thought that was. But the catch radius of Thielen is just something that we've never seen before. I mean, you can throw it while he's running full speed one direction behind him towards the <laughs> ground. And somehow he does like a weird... <laughs> like he contorts his body, he catches nearly everything. I should look at the our PFF uh, Elite. Yeah, they're a sponsor as well, so uh, I know everyone loves PFF except for Zimmer. Uh, and see what the percentage of balls thrown to him and the percentage of his catches, because it has to be completely through the roof. You and I didn't have a chance to talk about this, though. It was a big topic. Um, this he made past another. Week. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, Adam yeah. made another another great catch in practice today. He was across the middle and reaching way out ahead of him. That was a, not a poorly thrown ball, but wasn't right there. And he just, you know, grabbed with his fingertips and, you know, just just it, great body control. I'm sorry. It go reminds ahead. me of when we rented the movie theater for the opener two seasons ago uh, with Bradford having the best game of his career, and he had those two deep passes to Thielen. And um, a lot of wide receivers, I don't think, would have caught those balls or would, or they at least wouldn't have been able to get some yards after the catch because uh, Bradford kind of led him a little bit too far. But on the tips of his fingers, he caught those and I think uh, hauled them in for either touchdowns or, or really big gains. And it was not necessarily his coming out party, but it was like, man, this guy's just awesome. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I hadn't gotten your take on – the um, Trent Williams thing, and and the, you know, I I was talking to Ian. We talked about this on the show. He has been obs- just obsessed with the idea of the Vikings getting him. Now, in a perfect world, adding him would uh, abate a lot of my concerns about the offensive line. Even though I'm very very happy with the moves that they made this off season, I would be on cloud nine selling shirts in the merch store. You know. Super Bowl or bust, even though that's probably uh, where I'm at anyway. And uh, but I just I don't see how that is even in the realm of possibility, considering the financial situation. Oh, I, I don't. Uh, you know, I, I heard the talk about it. You know, uh, somebody wants to be traded, so who needs an offensive tackle? And they, they people speculate. Oh, Riley Reef and somebody else. Oh, Treadwell. You know, yeah, whoever. that's that's who. I mean, it, it's and uh, I think it was a second round pick next year and a third round pick the year after. It's was, such fun. It would yeah. be wonderful. It's not going to happen. You know, I don't no. know how the, the contracts line up. Um, and they just cleared, you know, some cap space uh, with with the uh, 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 Kyle Rudolph extension, which will allow them to uh, survive the season. I think in case they have to do emergency injury signings for players yeah. that go down to people like it which always happen so i don't know what this guy you know if, if this guy's gonna uh be traded you know he's probably gonna come in here and complain that he wants to have his that contract renegotiated so i mean you know, the sure. vikings they probably can't even they probably can't even uh entertain it unless they traded him and cleared some major cap space and, and we I, don't even do you is that come out i checked um Connor uh, Wickland, who is one of the managing editors of Purple PTSD, he's kind of our cap guy, and he's writing. I just uh, edited his article that should be live by the time people listen to this show, unless they're listening live, uh, about the co- the numbers behind Rudolph's extension. And there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of big name, uh, Ian Rappaport, and other guys who are disagreeing on Twitter about the numbers behind this. As far as I can see... <coughs> Uh, it's a five-year extension, so it's an extra year. Um, it's four, four years. years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's four right. years, but five years total, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, so it'd be through 2023, where he'd be 34 years old, 
Uh, the four-year deal is $36 million, which is, uh, breaks down to $9 million a year, putting him in the top five of all tight ends. Um, but it doesn't seem like anyone really knows how much of that is guaranteed, how much uh, is dead cap. I've heard that after this season they could cut him with no dead cap at all. I want to say that. I, 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 I well, go ahead. I was gonna say that. I don't. That sounds unlikely. You got to think too. I, much yeah. I and especially. I was just gonna say based on uh, Rudolph's tweet or Instagram or whatever he, he when he wrote that whole thing about his family and being a Viking forever, uh, so on and so forth. It doesn't seem like one year and then being able to cut him makes sense. <laughs> yes. No, you're right. I mean, I, uh, it was interesting. Kyle would talk afterwards and and uh, brought up. Uh, Jimmy Kleinsaucer, who was uh, Vic- Vikings for 13 years at tight end, and and uh, how much you know, they they had talked the two of them uh, when Ka- uh, Kyle first came here, and Kleinsaucer was at the end, and he was saying, "Yeah, I was, I, I could have gone somewhere else for more money, and and I really wanted to be here, and I appreciated." And Kyle was saying today how that was a lot like his situation. Their family has really made this this uh, uh minnesota their home you know they've really become entrenched in 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 the area they you know whether it's kids in school or or uh, uh kyle and his activities in the community he, he's mm-hmm. huge he was up, up for the man of the year last year as everybody knows so I, I think it was a big deal of him he really made it sound like all the and he called it rumors that were out there that he he wanted to go somewhere else and win a championship and get more money blah blah. He said it wasn't about that. He goes, I wanted to stay here, but he he and his agents worked to make it right and they had to figure it out with with cap space. I, I you know I had to ask somebody else. Yeah, I don't understand this. How they can they can pile more money onto his current uh, season this year? Yeah, on, and and that somehow alleviates the Vikings cap space. I mean. You know, bring in Connor Wickland, whoever you said. Somebody explains to me, I you know, it, uh, how how did this math works? But uh, you know, Rob Brzezinski is the guy who figures that yep. out, and it's, apparently it works. So I, maybe you know, it's some um, signing bonus. Perhaps I mean I'm sure they they must do it that way, but you know, um, it, it, it's funny. I mean, yeah, they move it around with signing bonuses, and some of it's guaranteed money, and I'm sure the Vikings were working at you know having. Many of the, the last couple of years not guaranteed, so they can protect themselves if he if he goes in the tank. Or, but you know, I uh, there are some people that are complaining about the signing. Yeah, yeah, I saw it online when I was reading about it last night, saying you know, oh god, that's great for for Kyle Rudolph, a lot of money for someone who's mediocre at best. And you know, well, it's, it's, I I am so sick of that take. Uh, I mean, he had one down year, uh, but I mean, he was. Two years ago, he was the leading, leading receiver in touchdowns on the team. Exactly. Like, no, that's still uh, great shape. You know, and the, the assumption that Irv Smith Jr. is just going to come into the league at the tight end that's position, right. which is one of the harder positions to acclimate to just because of all the physicality behind it, is, is a big one. I think the team is is setting themselves up. If, if, if Smith Jr. turns into this huge star and, and everything, then they can get rid of Rudolph and it's not a big hit on the team. Uh, that way, but I also think that, and I wrote this in whatever I was, uh, oh, when I was editing Connor's piece, I added, you know, that the team might, financially, it might make sense, but whether or not they, I mean, Rudolph's such a big, I thought at least, a big uh, fan favorite that it might, they people might be a little upset about that, but yeah, there's just, this is contingent of people that thinks that just because Maybe it's because he's protected his body and he doesn't fight for extra yards Gronk style because if he did, he would never be on the field the entire season. That they're upset about that or that he's just not very fast or whatever. But he catches the ball when you throw it to him. He is really good in the red zone and at scoring touchdowns. And when you're pairing him up with somebody like Irv Smith Jr., who, again, I said this last week that my dad will hate this. And the first thing he said to me when I saw him was, you're right, I hate it. Um, I, it's exciting. You know, they've tried and tried and tried to get this two tight end thing going. Uh, Rudolph was super excited about it last year at his youth camp and went with under Filippo, and it didn't happen. And and with the offensive line being improved, they might not need as much help from the tight ends chipping or blocking in general, and that might open up a whole new type of thing that we haven't seen before as Vikings fans. I don't want to compare them to Gronk and Hernandez, but from a skill set perspective, that's what they're trying to do, I think. You have the two different types 
Uh, they're not going obviously going to be as good because both could have ended up being Hall of Famers had Hernandez not been completely insane. Uh, but pump the brakes on this Kyle Rudolph stuff because he's a good guy and he's come through when they've asked him to and he scores touchdowns and well, what you know, else that, do you that's want? The, that's that's the take that that you just described earlier is that whenever they complain about him they bring up oh they drafted a Irv Smith and he's going to be the next big thing oh if that's going to happen it's be it's going to be because Rudolph mentored him yes to be a pro- professional I was going to show, add that and then ask you a little or talk about that a little too show show him how to play the position as how to be a pro how to play the position what to do yeah. just as the same way Klein Saucer uh, mentored Rudolph when he came into the league it's how it works this is a perfect scenario for the Vikings if they can get out of it the last year if if if, if uh, uh, Smith blows up and they don't need uh, him and they would probably have to draft somebody else as well to if, if they really like the two tight end system but you see him running it a lot even just in like mini camp and OTAs when when you know Morgan isn't there they've got uh uh let's say his name again Cole Haikutini <laughs> yeah rolls uh, off the tongue exactly so it, you know it's something they obviously want to do uh, I I think it's fine yes uh, it would did uh, Rudy come into the league and not be uh, a very good blocker yes did he get a little bit better? Marginally, yes. Is he uh, was he injury prone uh, coming in from college into his first couple of years in the pros? Yes. Has he gotten better? Yes. Is that the sacrifice as you mentioned about him not extending plays and 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 breaking up a lot of blockers downfield? Yes, perhaps. Yes, yes. I I suspect it is. But by the same token, he's been on the field ever since he started, yes. you know, doing that and. Bud Grant has always said for years, you know, the the, the most valuable players in his teams are the durable ones. So you, you got to be out there. You got to be on the field, and and he has produced. You know, he's not. I think everybody sees him, his size, and they they see, you know, how come he's not Gronk? How come he's yep. not? Uh, 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 what's the guy from KC? Uh, Kelsey. Uh, Kelsey. How come he's not him? You know, fine. You know, he's not. That's not the kind of player he is. And that's but Gronk not, just you know, retired I, before he was thirty years old too. That's a so, great point. That's why you know, exactly, the- and he and he totally, and he he was, um, I mean, he was such a risk in fantasy because most of the seasons he'd miss games, uh, but he was a beast when he was there. And I, I do have a strong feeling that Gronk might return in a year or two when his body kind of gets back and he kind of thinks, wow, I could still do this. Maybe go for one more Super Bowl while Brady's still playing. But uh, to touch on <laughs> what you were saying, that's in my a big- couple of years. That he wants, I think. Well, he wants to play to forty-five. What is he? Forty-two. Yeah, whatever. Um, we'll see. Anyway, uh, yeah, I was reading a little bit before the show about how Irv Smith Sr. had called Rudolph after the draft and asked him to take care of his kid, almost as if they were going into prison together or something. Wow. And And um, it was a great analogy. And uh, how Rudolph took that to heart and promised to do so and how he has been doing that. I think that's really cool, and that's a testament to the type of guy that he is. Wow, he's the one that let uh, – who's the wide receiver from uh, Creighton that has – used to be uh, with the, uh, uh, yeah, the Arizona the, Cardinals. Yeah, the Kambucha guy, Michael uh, Floyd. Yes, Michael Floyd. He, he spent uh, a summer living with Rudolph trying to keep uh, him out of uh, harm's way as far as the uh, – Good point. The non the non Cambucci stuff. So maybe that's maybe that, that's what's going on there. Who knows? But no, Rudy is a great guy. He's a great influence and he's a great leader in the locker room. It's a, it's a good thing if it doesn't kill you. If it works, it makes the numbers work. If it helps the roster, absolutely. To it, pull Rudolph out of this lineup. Well, I guess he was on a contract for this season. But if you you take him, uh, you know, if if you trade him and all you get is draft point picks you know i they're going to struggle in the offense with yeah. just irv smith learning the the, the game it, it's going to take a while so um I, I think it's a great signing i'm glad they did it kyle rudolph made it sound like it was never a chance it wouldn't happen you know that zimmer wants him he he, he has said it before and he was saying it again today he says oh no i i fully expected him to be here he's under contract for this year but you know i'm and he he, he truly wants him zimmer loves those guys that are locker room guys and yeah you know, you, you need them. You need them on your team because there's so much turnover in this league every year that you need some guys that that it isn't just the coach in your ear ear saying this is how you you're a professional. You need some some peers that come up to you and say, hey, listen, dude, this is how you got to do things in order to make this this career work for you. So it's a good thing. Did you notice any um, 
uh, the report of, of the Vikings bringing in a, a few punters to to uh, compete with Wild today at all. <laughs> Justin Vogel, who was with the Packers in 2017, or Shane Tripe. Hucus, that can't be his right. Uh, who they got in rookie camp, and then apparently there's like some one other guy who's a mystery guy, uh, who they're gonna um, bring in to compete with. They him. brought in try Pucus and suck up and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hunters, no, I, you know, I, I, you, you sent me that note and I go what? You know, here I, I as I was uh, uh, late to the, the the start of practice, like I was saying, because of the the change of venue, I came in and they were doing the punting. And okay. I was focused on BB watching him, so I, to be honest, I wasn't even watching who was kicking. So I apologize; I don't have any information on that. I I, uh, I find it interesting. I you know it's it's uh, it's it's worthwhile. You know, yeah. Put everybody on notice. Always look to improve. It doesn't mean you're they're going to change punters, but they're going to see how their punter stacks up to. Uh, Somebody else that's out there. You got to keep doing that. You got to keep looking at those guys, especially with a with a new uh, special teams coach, right? And, and him having perhaps a different point of view. I know that. Great that, point. Um, what's his face? That uh, the, the old special teams coach. Um, Prefer. Yeah, Prefer was going always uh, was switching punters, and I think he was looking a lot for hang time and directional punting. And that's not necessarily and, and, and anybody a universal who Cluey. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> uh, which is unfortunate because Cluey uh, actually statistically is the best punter in the history of the team. Uh, apparently, I've defended that position before after he's been on the show because people didn't agree with it, but it's true. He broke a ton of records, um, but I think that's the key. Is, is and I don't know uh, what the new special teams coach is is looking for but it seemed like they were always looking for guys who could directionally punt and who had good hang time <clears throat> and that's and that's difficult but yeah well i mean it's it'll be interesting to see the differences between this and prefer especially because they wanted to keep prefer but he decided a change of scenery was in order um but we don't spend a lot of time talking about special teams on this show and a lot of people don't have a lot of interest in special teams but it's obviously a, a super important part of the game, especially with a team like the Vikings, where t- field position is incredibly important, clock management, that sort of thing. So I think that Zimmer, his influence is there as well, just because they want to make sure that they're maximizing that part of the game, field position, and, and so on. So we shall see. But uh, for, uh, getting back into minicamp, there were some players that were there uh, that, that you watched, and... I got a lot of uh, crap for the name of the show last week, which was the title said uh, one of the things was the Diggs mystery, and people acted like I was implying that it was some big controversy or negative, whereas I really just meant that he wasn't there and there wasn't a lot of information as to why he wasn't there. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I think the first thing that you and I both said was that wasn't a big deal. Like, people don't go. AP didn't go. Not like he's the best guy to compare people to, but um, in no way did I did I mean that, that that was some big controversy. But he was back, and I was wondering if uh, there had been any light shut on that. And also to defend the point of the Diggs mystery, I know a couple days ago Zimmer came out to downplay his absence, which to me implies that people were implying that it was a bad thing. So I, uh, you and I didn't agree with that at all, but uh, that's kind of how some of the fans took it. So with him being back, I was wondering if there was any more information on that. You know, last week he, he addressed the media and someone asked him, um, it was kind of just, uh, it was, uh, I think he, I guess he was in front of the podium and I, he said, you know, answer quickly. It was just a family deal that you know he had to tend to, and that's all he said, and that's all you needed to hear. And you know, Zimmer, when he was asked about it last week, he said, "Yeah, whatever. You know, no big deal. Don't worry about it. It's not. It's not a mandatory mini camp." He told his brother to stop going on Twitter and implying that he's getting traded to the Redskins. <laughs> uh, yeah, that could be gone go and take, took his phone away. But uh, <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's 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 not mandatory. OTAs, but uh, uh, minicamp is. So uh, he was there and he spoke to the media and he he, he looked great. He looked uh, him him and uh, uh, Diggs. I'm sorry, him and Thielen look great. And especially when Cousins is throwing to him. Now I'm gonna. 
it's got to be got to have a caveat with this. I mean, it, you know, it, we we had talked. You gave, we found out the, the the offensive players you told me to watch were were not playing. Uh, you sent some defensive players, you know, and I start looking at them in linemen. It's really hard to evaluate offensive linemen and defenders yeah. in in uh, without pads because these guys are basically chasing chasing the, the other guys around and reacting, just trying to get in front of them. And you know, people get taken to the turf. I you know. Uh, Diggs got drilled by some some young guy who was grabbing him as he was knocking him out of bounds. And oh, God, it was in a way of I, shoot, I didn't mean to do that. There was another time mm-hmm. when Diggs was double covered by Rhodes and I want to say uh, Anthony Harris, and he stopped short on this cut, grabbed the ball in a great quick play, and uh, Rhodes fell out of bounds right in amongst their media and just laid there and just got out this ah oh, exasperation. <laughs> <laughs> and then he lay there for a few seconds, smiling, gets up, and he says, ref, where's your flag? You know, so uh, it, it, it was fun to see that they were having fun out there. But, it, you know, it, it also goes to the point that the offense has it has the advantage and stuff like this. And it's much more fun to watch. So, you know, I'm going to go back out there tomorrow, and I'm going to try to watch defensive players and, and the line, but it's almost useless. You know, I uh, what I would like to say in a real quick segue about – Elfline and uh, Bradbury, you know, there were no bot snaps, and mm. uh, uh, they looked, you know, smooth getting off the ball, you know, so there wasn't any flags thrown for offsides. It's about as best you can see it because they, the guys aren't rushing that much. I mean, these guys are shoving each other and trying to push through and put some pressure on the quarterback, but it's, you know, you got to take it with a huge grain of salt. And yeah. Especially for the defense, too. But I, I you know what, it, it might be a little early to say it, but I, I really think – there is even some more chemistry going on there between Diggs and Thielen and, and their quarterback. And, you know, they, they, they seem to be connecting in, in the right spots. And, and, and Cousins looked really good. I did, you know, Cousins looked okay last week. I thought he looked really good today. And he was hitting some, some you know, great timing routes, especially with those guys. And that comes from playing a season. Diggs was asked yeah. afterwards if he's going to do some more between now and camp. because oh, yeah, we must get together. We have to get together. We will. So, you know, they, I think they're – they're all trying to figure out the new offense and uh, um, continue uh, building chemistry. And, and, you know, if this, if this is any indication, huge caveat, then uh, I would say that's happening. Well, that's exciting too, though, just because it felt like at, at points last season, especially the first eight games when Thielen was breaking all those records, that, I mean, Diggs was a huge part of that in that I think that he was the decoy and that uh, opposing defenses were – you know, trying to stop him as a deep threat as opposed to Thielen and because they thought it was more manageable to get those chunk yardages than huge touchdowns, especially after the Minneapolis Miracle. Um, but I, you did feel like he was more connected to Thielen than he was to Diggs. And if, if, that, if it's uh, improved with Thielen and also Diggs, uh, it's just – it's getting harder and harder – not to get excited about the upcoming season. And, and uh, you know, like you said, they're not even in pads yet. And they're not going full speed on defense because they, you know, they're not going to hurt well, they their, can't hit their them. opposing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, it's glorified flag football at this point. Um, to a, but it, to a degree it is, yep. But it's still like super, super exciting. I mean, even having the news that, and this isn't a surprise to anybody, but that Bradbury is... Uh, the starting center for sure. They they gave him that role this week, um, which is to be expected considering mm-hmm. where they drafted him. But just him having more time to, to just work on that solely to, to work on uh, the chemistry with Elfline, uh, especially with Elfline, you know, having a couple seasons removed. Excuse me from the last time that he played guard. You know, it's all it's all moving in the right direction at this point, and so I'm. Uh, I'm I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we talked about the hope being, is big. The hope is huge right now, Joe. It, it's got to be, you know, because I'm like we established last week. I'm already really down about next season, uh, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest uh, take ever. <laughs> that's the most jo- also the most Joe take of all time. It was. It was. Uh, we have to write that down. Remember that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we're fine for right now, but look at next year. Oh, we're screwed. Uh. <laughs> Actually, the, the, the person that you sent back to me that you watched was someone that uh, a lot of people, a lot of our writers on Slack were interested in, namely Connor uh, Wickling, because I guess Connor loves uh, this player. But uh, Madison uh, was the guy that you kept an eye on who 
is maybe being overshined a little bit just by some of the other players in regards to media coverage, but he's going to have a huge role this season, especially considering um, Dalvin Cook's injury history, knock on uh, drywall. But he could end up being such a big pickup for them. I totally agree with that take. I, uh, I, I, you know, I think you haven't heard much about him, maybe because he's overshadowed by other things, perhaps. But the other thing is he's not making any mistakes, and he is in a, uh, 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 I, I want to say almost fifty percent, probably not quite there, because I wasn't tracking it exactly. But just my impression uh, in working with the ones and trading off with with Dalvin Cook. I mean, they run a couple plays with him, and then Mattis is in there doing it, Madison. And it, uh, he, he, the game does not look too big for him at this point. Now it's going to be different again with pads. You know, you're going to have to get a sign that I put up everywhere. Everything, every take I have from here on in is Pretty until much. I get pads on. You know, if but we're on it, video, it, you could just hold up a little sign on a stick. That's exactly. Awesome. But the, the the other side of the coin is. Uh, I wrote it down uh, last week, and I wrote it down again. The guy looks so comfortable catching the ball out of the backfield, and they uh-huh. have done they have done plenty of that. He does not he does not look like AP used to look, you know, catching the ball, you know, yeah. just still kind of working his way through each catch. AP would make the catches, but you could see it wasn't natural, and it really looks that way with uh, with Madison, and I, and I, I certainly feel that way. It is that way with uh, Delvin Cook as well, and you know, there's. Just like last week at OTAs, they they run a lot of this play action and reverse naked bootleg. Where that that had that they uh, I was said last week show that the, they were schooling the defense and they were sucking them again today. So um, I I am excited about Madison. I think he's going to get perhaps even more time than uh, uh, kind of what I've already forgotten his name. Who is our Dalvin other running? Cook? No, not Cook. Uh, Amir Abdullah. His, no, his backup. Cook's backup last year, Latavius Murray. Oh, I mean, he's going to get almost uh, as much more time than him the way you know I've I've seen so far. But you know, like I said, it's really it's it. I I really like the way he looks. I like the way he moves, and I I I just like how comfortable he is. I I was trying to get grab him afterwards just to ask him if he thought you know uh, you know what he thought of the jump to this league and, and let him know that I think he looks pretty comfortable and just find that out and hopefully i get a chance to do so because it it just seems like he stepped right in and 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 you know doesn't doesn't look like a a, a rookie the other guy who looks really quick and fast is mike boone I and mean, maybe it's mm. because he doesn't have pads on i always thought he was a little bit more uh a bruiser but boy he he looks uh quick and uh tough through the hole so far in the two weeks that i've seen him so um i think of the running back department the vikings are are, are probably looking pretty good have you seen anything from uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, Kari Blazing Game, Blazing Game. I can't even pronounce it. I had I, I uh, one of Does our he play for the Golden State Warriors. What are you talking about? Adam? He's <laughs> apparently he he physically looks a lot like Murray did, and we had a a uh, a guy um, that works for a website called Lineups.com that submitted an article, kind of as a a uh, general NFL guy that that focuses on depth charts. It was on Vikings territory about a week ago, and one of the guys that he focused on was was him, and basically saying that he might end up taking C.J. Ham's position because he's a lot more capable of catching the ball. But he's a a big bruiser. Uh, he's like six two two thirty, so he looks a lot more like uh, Latavius Murray did. And apparently, uh, I think that he was an undrafted free agent, <clears throat> uh, but a, uh, he's supposed to have a ton of potential. Probably just a practice squad guy. I was wondering if you, if you I, saw I him had, out there at all versus C.J. Ham or even I Amir had, Abdullah, uh, if you've seen him at all. Now, see, this is why I sent you the, the question last night to give me some names. To uh, I know. <laughs> I love throwing out just random I know, people. Nice guy. Thanks a lot. After this first 45 minutes of just total expert analysis i know just, I get to uh, say, uh, I'll, no, I'll be honest I, Joel. I i had no idea who he was until i read that article so i'm not acting like i'm some depth chart genius <laughs> by any that. stretch of the imagination um uh, but i, I, I am a big that, oh yeah I will, I will say that ham looked good he made two nice catches out of the backfield and they were dump offs but uh, uh one of them was across the middle as well and so i i, I think uh uh, I don't think Ham's ready to go anywhere just yet. I but. can't imagine that either, just how, how much he's uh, been ingrained in this team and, and everything. I think that 
uh, however you pronounce his name, blazing him, will uh, end up on the practice squad. But I am a big, uh, and I always will be, Amir Abdullah nerd just because of how good he was in college and yeah, where he played college. Also, even though Nebraska is kind of a new addition to the Big Ten, uh, but he was uh, him and uh, Melvin Gordon. It was like one, two uh, best running backs in the in the in the league that or in the in college football. So you know he's he's a little undersized, so there's just no way he was going to be able to handle even 15 carries a game in the NFL. But I wonder if he'll be the odd man out just with the Madison pick and all of that, uh, even though they did resign him. It's possible. I don't. I suspect he probably doesn't have any. Uh, uh, I don't even know the rules, but he can't throw a guy like that back on a practice squad, even if he did yeah. someone would grab grab him anyway. So um, it's possible. I, I I'm suddenly thinking they're pretty darn deep there. And yeah, you're right. The Madison pick uh, is uh, may prevent that, preclude that. But uh, you never know in this league, and you never know what happens between now and. I'm not wishing anybody to get injured or anything, but uh, you got to have depth at every position to survive and. You gotta have cap space to sign them when you don't. So I uh, were you surprised that all that AP came out this week and said he wanted to retire as a Viking just based on some of the animosity and stuff he said last season? Um, surprised. That's a good t- way to ask it. Because uh, I mean, all that's how it usually <laughs> works, and it's water under the bridge. And but I mean, it's a lot of this. I mean, maybe he said that because Kevin Warren is gone now, and so you feel. <laughs> Oh, that's about a good it. point. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. It, it, it's crazy. I, am I surprised? No, because AP is, you know, God love him, is kind of a knucklehead at times and has, uh, you know, always never never been, well, I'm not going to have a strong word. He's a great guy, but uh, uh, he, uh, he answers the questions as you ask him, and that question was put to him, so he answered. It's not like he was out there fishing, you know, uh. letting – throwing this thing up there. I think Ben Gessling from the Star Tribune had asked him the question and at, a, at an event this week, and he, and he answered it. And uh, I'm not surprised, at, you know, but I'm surprised because it, it's he's not retired, you know. He's yeah. still on the, the, the Washington team, and so that's usually something that comes up afterwards. You talk to the, the, the uh, team behind the scenes, and, and they say, hey, some, either one camp or the other puts that out there and says, would you like to do this? They don't they, the uh, company says, "Oh yeah, it's great. You know, it gives us a great thing to to get people fired up to come down, and you know, it's good marketing opportunity." But uh, I, I'm, I guess, in all in the final analysis, I'm hope I hope that it happens. I would think it would. He's got to be one of the the top uh, performing uh, players in this team's history, and you know, yes, he's he's had a the, the tail end of his career here was certainly checkered, and I uh, have problems with. A lot of that that went down, but um, I, I really think uh, he should and probably will be retired as a Viking. For sure, it's it's really too bad that things ended the way that they did, just because he was such a. I mean, they had to change a lot of their marketing stuff just because of how big of a player he was. I mean, even a lot of the websites like PurpleJesus.com had to uh, go undergo marketing changes. Which is why I'm comfortable with purpleptsd.com because I don't ever see that name uh, coming back to bite us. Uh, the last question is: there's a there's a really deep uh, undrafted free agent that I wanted to talk. To. I'm kidding. Um, we also <laughs> I was gonna say, oh god, <laughs> no, <Chances> no. Are. <laughs> I don't know. Him. I haven't seen him. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> we we did have cousins on the list of the the aden- the amended list of of people to talk about. You you talked a little bit about him and. Uh, in regards to Diggs and Thielen and everything, but in watching him with the new offense, do you see him looking comfortable or getting a lot of talking to the coaches a lot, maybe whether it's Kubiak or or anyone else, uh, just about what the plays are, or does he see, he seem to be relatively uh, fluid with it? I, I think it really is, Joe. I, I have not noticed him uh, struggling or looking any less uh, in command out there. Um, I did see uh, him miss one pass today that I think was a timing issue, and I don't know if it was with uh, not one of the starters. I can't remember who it was. That, but after that, Blazing he was... Blazing game? <laughs> I'm not sure who it was, but I said other than that pass, he, he was on the on the nuts with everything he was throwing, and he looked really good. Um, I, I, you know, the thing I did notice was uh, uh, the rotation... 
uh, Kyle Slaughter last week and uh, mm. this week so far has hardly gotten has gotten very few reps. It's been all number three. What the heck's his name? The guy we picked up from uh, Mannion. Uh, no, that's number four. Uh, Jake Browning. Oh, give, and, and he was struggling. He was struggling a bit, uh, um, overthrowing some passes, underthrowing some others, and maybe I don't know if it was because it was all this uh, the reps he was getting. I did know he made one nice play where play broke down and he ran outside and <clears throat> he ended up out racing a linebacker and, and looked like he had some good moves. He's certainly faster than Cousins, I thought, and seeing that. But uh, um, did Slaughter uh, get any reps at all? Because I know I don't he think did. he did last in OTAs. Right, as far as I'd heard, uh, you know, it was come to late in the practice, and I turned to the guys next to me, Sam Ekstrom and, and, and Tim Yotter, and I said, "You know, guys, is it me or is it Slaughter? Not is it? You know, this is his first play of the uh, practice." And yeah, and they, we were talking about the same thing last week. So, uh, you know, and Sam made this point that you know, you know, we should watch for it tomorrow to see if it's uh, a rotation thing where yeah. Slaughter will get to play, you know, more reps tomorrow or. Is uh you know they're trying to find out you know point I made maybe they, they know what they have in him and they want to see what uh, 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 Browning can do because he's he's a new on the the roster so I don't know it's a uh, it was it was it was really weird you know it's four quarterbacks back there you know you want to get all your guys some reps they only practice for an hour and a half so you know it's hard you, to you see. get a feeling that that Browning's going to be the guy um, they you know they seem to like to have that young guy that they can develop and. Um, I know there's a lot of people that really like Slaughter. Yeah, if that's the case, how come he hasn't? He's not the guy. I mean, they, they keep him, keep keeping him around. Is that because they've had nobody else? I yeah. don't know. But I mean, I've, I mean, I've heard a lot of people say that Mannion is going to get uh, the boot too, but they clearly gave him some decent money this off season. And when you bring a guy in like that and you invest in him, I, I don't remember particularly what his dead cap space was. If it was a hundred thousand, I for some reason am remembering us looking that up, but I could be completely wrong about that. For next week, I'll look up what the dead cap space would be for these guys and whether or not it matters where they cut them. But they're probably going to go into each game with two quarterbacks like they did last season and and kind of go from there. But uh, it's a good problem to have, you know. Um, I already forget what 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 was his name the the quarterback that Heineke that that played uh, started some games for the Panthers last year and did. I think he started out relatively slow, but I think he he played relatively well from from what I've read uh, as the season went on. So they they seem to have an eye for these guys, and a lot of people loved Heineke here. He had that big arm, um, and and also bad decision making in regards to uh, getting into his house when he locks himself out. <laughs> but it's going to be a fun camp, is my point. I'm very 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 excited for camp, and uh, I think it's super cool um, that you get to go to. A lot of these things that a lot of other uh, podcasts don't have the access to. So uh, I don't I, I don't know if I do a good enough job of, of explaining that or, or letting people out there know that when I'm advertising the show. But you say it too much for my maybe, money. But that's maybe just me. that's <laughs> it. It's, it's, it's I just think it's the coolest thing in the world. It's it's well, obviously been a dream of mine to be one of those guys that shows up and like in the cartoons that has one of those old school hats on uh, that have that <laughs> card sticking out of it. It must be their press pass now that I'm thinking about it. Yes. I was just going to say, I don't know what the hell those cards were, but that's what I think yeah. of when I think of you. Uh, did you ever see the the, the, uh, uh, the Three Stooges bit where you know they're trying to sneak into some press conference when they went into the bathroom and came back with buttons from the bathroom? One, Two of them said press and the other one said pull. So. <laughs> uh, I love that's Three Stooges. Good. I always oh, yes. say, I always uh, say uh, swingly when people ask for things at the liquor store, and well, very few uh, people know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, well, per usual, I uh, I said we could try a leaner show today, and that maybe go for a half an hour just to see if that helped. And we went the full hour like we always do, which I think is a good thing. Uh, there was a lot to talk about, and it's all positive, so that's important. I will leave the show with the remainder of our new theme song and remind people to check out purpleterritoryradio.com for all the different Minnesota sports podcasts. We have some twin stuff on there, some high school-based stuff. I will be on uh, KLGR radio tomorrow. Um, I'll be recording in the morning, and it'll be playing sometime during the early afternoon during the uh, the show The Scoop with Seth, Seth Stupel. 
Uh, I think we'll be talking about a lot of the stuff that was on today, but it'll be cool. Uh, that's a Redwood Falls, uh, Minnesota radio station. I guess Redwood Falls is about, uh, I don't know, as far down as Mankato, as many miles away as Mankato is, but all the way to the west. So it's kind of straight out to the west, a little bit to the southwest. Um, but yeah, stay tuned to purpleptsd.com, vikingsterritory.com for all your uh, written stuff, some podcast stuff, and then definitely check out purpleterritoryradio.com uh, for all of your uh, podcast stuff. But this has been uh, Morning Joe's. We'll be back next Tuesday. Thanks for listening and skull.